things we're going to show you today are three and a half. Okay. Basically, uh, I won't mention Eric's name, but Eric brought these over. He said, I've got these in the garage. Anybody want them? And um, the light bulb, actually a spotlight went off over Rob's head. And he says, we can, we can uh, make something with those. And Larry, you and Buzz can have a Saturday morning, so that's where we are. No, I, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. I just said we should do this as a class. Mm -hmm. And then I said uh -huh. I did stuff on a computer while they got a lot of prep and did it. So we've got two sizes. This is a standard size. And this is a larger one. And we're, all the boxes we're making today are based on these two sizes. And since I'm going to do a presentation, I want to write these on the wall. On the wall? You used to try mark board. <laughs> the small one's three and a three and a sixteenth by four, and the large one's five and a sixteen by six. So all the boxes we're making are based on that opening. The first box we made is nothing but a little minor box. Start off with a long board. The, the sides on this box vary, so you can you can make the box any size you want as long as the opening when you finish is three and sixteenth by four. So what we did here took a piece of cherry, chopped it up on a chop saw till all the pieces are exactly the same dimension. I mean, exactly the same dimension sides long in, carry it over to the table saw, set this to exactly 45 degrees, not 45.1 or 44.9, 45, and we used a um, Wexler Wixie gauge. Put this right here on your table saw, you know this is supposed to be 7 inches, set that at 7 inches, run it through the table saw, Flip it over, run it through the table saw, and that puts a really nice miner on all sides equal. Then we run it through a router, put a round over on it, run it through a router and put a um, slot in it, which is also called a dado. Well, I was trying to think of Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just half my word, so I figured I'd help. And then we cut a quarter inch piece of wood out of the same type. On the router, we set that up and put a slot in it. And what's the slot for? We're making a bank. So I guess the slot's for coins and money. And then we assemble it. Uh, you can use any wood you find. This has a nice reinforcing uh, rib, rib in it. You, uh, show you. See this nice reinforcing rib you right want to there? Hold it, uh, for the camera? Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> flooring. So, um, we've rounded the edge, put a dado in it, and we've also put screw hose in it for the door. And if you look at the door, this side it's one dimension, this side's the other dimension, so we pre-drill pre it, put tape on it, uh, wrap glue on all the joints, tape it up, leave it. When it glues, take it out, spray it, 
to stick the front on it. And if you put it on right, you've got a bank. Where's the screw holes? The, the screws go through the sides here. I beg your pardon. Catch. Catch. Um, we don't have any peanuts today, gallery. <laughs> so, and you simply push it in. There are screw holes here, pre drilled, because it's awful hard to drill a hole in a small confined area like that. And that's the first bank. And next week I'll bring these in assembled and painted and sprayed. Yes. Okay. Larry, while you got that there, could you tell them the slot in the back where you put the thing in there? Okay. This slot was done simply on a router with a 3 8 inch bit. Set up blocks on both sides of the router. Have the fence here. Put it down on the bit. Slide it over. Pick it up and you got a slot. These are mainly just for people to put not real valuable stuff in. But that slot helped us out when we had one of these things that we had forgot the combination for. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. So that's a very simple miner box. We've got some others that we've done. And the miners, if everything's the right dimension and the blade's at 45, the miners on this box line up really nice. <coughs> Okay. Any questions on that? Any wood you want to use, as we said, four wood, whatever. S stain it, spray it. This one is polyurethane, but whatever you want to do. So the next step, we thought um, we had someone come in and says, you know, my wife's got a, a bank made out of a post office box door. And so Buzz brought us this truck with a bank in the back. This was uh, given to her. She used to be a postmaster. I know this because she goes postal on me and taking the paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody gave, they gave her this as a. So we yet. thought that was a great idea. We went out on the web, looked at some trucks by different people to make plans. Uh, ordered a set of plans, really nice looking trucks. They were going to be very detailed. And when we went to um, assemble it, we didn't meet the criteria. Three and a half before, the back of the trucks we had ordered were only three. So the doors wouldn't fit. So we went back to Buzz's original. And Buzz is going to tell you today how he just reproduced that truck. Buzz. Okay, so this is the truck my wife's got. Well, so, uh, when we found out those plans didn't work, we said, okay, that's pretty simple. Pretty basic, we can just measure and figure out all the proper sizes, which we did. Now, if anybody wants the dimensions, what we did is we, we copied. Rob's copy machine. Basically, make patterns off this kind of stuff. And cut all the pieces out. Where would you like this one? Right here, this one. Now you guys are scroll stars going to laugh at me and Larry. <laughs> We're used to it. Because we got to the to the fenders right here and then we decided we'd get tricky. You know how Larry and 
fire to use. <laughs> so, probably used the router. It took, it took two days to make a temperature. Pretty much. No, not a router. So we came, you know, I measured this and got that compass out and all that. Drew this pattern right here. An MDF. Then we were saying, well, how are we going to do that? Then we got, and Rob was laughing at us the whole time. So we got the uh, Forstner bit and decided we were going to cut this thing. First we did the outside, we traced around that, cut it on the bounce band, so I used the pattern router bit, got that, and then we decided to use Forstner bit to cut the inside. Now that sort of kind of worked, but not really. Part of it was the wood. This is cherry, I believe. But we actually did get a couple of fenders after trying that. But basically it finally came down to, okay, let's go use the the pattern cutting bit to do the outside. And then I'll actually scroll, scroll saw that a little bit because I'm a scroll saw. Two hours later. Yeah, two hours later. So we, you know, we use the the orbital sander, you know, round it off, and we came up with these pretty fenders, which actually I like better than what they did here. But I digress. So here's all the parts. We'll credit Tom with this fine bench here. Because this, this actual truck, if you look at it, looks like they used some corner molding and a piece of wood. But Tom made that out of one piece of wood. Fine job. This was part of my pattern, too, for this whole situation. The outside, the inside. So this is our basic truck and you can see how it goes together. These are two of the fenders that actually came out of this process that we were able to save. And this is made out of a wormy oak. You see all the little holes in it. You kind of like it, we think of it as a uh, you know, the brick truck that got the gun or something. <laughs> so that's why we use that. There's not a lot of wood here you're using. It's all we saw to be five sixteenths of an inch thick. The uh, door slash window here, of course, I had to use. Yeah, I know, scroll stars. Go ahead, laugh, I don't care. But we use this so I could just go scroll side out real rough and then use the pattern cutter to get that nice window. But if you look at this original truck, whoever made this, it wasn't me, that's pretty thin. And that's the end grain, so it wouldn't take much to break that. So when we made ours, we actually moved that back a little bit to add a little strength. Now the uh, the engine block, pretty simple, makes two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Run it through the saw, get that 45. And when it's done, You have the engine block, then you have your, I actually scroll saw this. I did yeah. scroll saw, thank you, thank you very much. And then Larry, it's crooked. It's crooked. It's crooked. It's 
We're going to give this to Larry, one of these trucks, donating all the doors. Is his last name this town? So we just rounded up a few things. Yeah, we give you one right. These, uh... No K in my name, as far as I know. And... Well, it's not yours. I'll take it. It's not yours, it's for another guy I know. Okay, good. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're there for a Okay, is there anything down there? Anyway. These are some parts, you know, we found in the Rob's miscellaneous parts drawer. Some kind of a, a head that goes on a dowel. So we filled it in, sanded off one side, and those become your headlights. And then your grill glues onto the front of this block. And that's going to go. I, I didn't make as fancy a steering wheel as it's on this truck. We ran out of time, but. You know how to do that. And that block sits in there. Then you have bumpers. They were screws off. A lot of, yeah, actually, no, Tom did this. I don't know how he did it. Between scroll saw and, or band saw and a sander. Make two bumpers. Go right there. Front and back. In your top, same way on the router that you made that slot, and the top has a slight code cut around it. Now the truck, when you put it together, you got a little spreader bar up here, a little spreader bar back here by the door, and your inch. This is the inner wall. So this is the this is where your compartment is. That's where all the big bucks are at. So if you glue that in, and these two spreaders. Also, one thing I'll mention before I forget: the way they built this truck, they put a little rabbit in right there on the two sides. Why they did that, I don't know. Can you get that, Jack? You can see this round part shows up right there. The fender. So, clamp that all together. And that center wall and these two spreaders will kind of hold that. And the top goes on right here. Now we just did this door yesterday. The camera can get this now. But we actually had to, you got to be careful, we actually had to put a little shim piece in there. See that? Yeah. And we drilled, we pre-drilled before we put it together so we get that door on there. Because you got to be careful on this one. We're not. We're not dealing with very thick sides. You don't want a half inch screw on that to pop it out of here. The good thing about these is you can change the combination. We didn't go through that, but this is the one that, believe me, I got, got in trouble from my wife because I came home one day and go, honey, they lost the combination to the truck. Do you remember what it was? You did what? You better yeah. find that. We found it a couple of days later. But we're able to pry this little metal thing off and reach in there with a screwdriver, play it, and just push down on a little finger here. Probably see it better here. Just set it down. You can reach in, you can push down on that. And get slide the it over. What were you pushing? Slide Where? the screw over. No, Slide the screw, yeah. The, okay. no, the, screw, the screw on the crossbar. Okay, come up here. 
it's easier back here like the rest of the peanut gallon. Yes. Okay, well, there you go. They push it that little thing. The reason I learned that, because the banks that we have for my daughter, or my granddaughter, we couldn't find it, the combination. So we're trying to figure out how to get to it. I messed with it for like maybe about two weeks sitting there trying different combinations. That was close to what we had, and I couldn't find it. And then I looked at the big slot in here, and I figured out I could put a screwdriver there and push that thing open. And it took like 10 seconds, and I've been spending three weeks going, well, that ain't it. <laughs> Yeah, all these old days will be robbing the kids. Well, according to what I was talking about that slot earlier, what you were talking about, you would want to put this in an angle and if you were going to have the Canadian Royal Security, where they're not going to be able to get that to open it up. Which this one would be easy because it would be hard to get it to the front. Here's how you go. Yeah. But the other one that he was showing, here where you put that slot in, by the time you get it all together, you can reach in there and just pop that thing open by putting it in there. So you're not going to put anything greatly valuable in the thing anyway. I was going to use it with a gun case, but I didn't have anything that small. So anyway, put the block together and stick that in there. Put the top on. Now the these are your wheels. These are store bought out of your catalog. I think they look better than what they put on here. These <laughs> look like whoever made that kind of turn. Did you make those wheels? These? Oh. No, no. These, were, these were stolen from Rob. <laughs> I had to do a lot of work to get to them. <laughs> had to move a bunch of plywood. No, so basically, it's uh, these are one by one, just wood for the towel that goes in there. I could have, you know, you could make it so it rolls, but these are kind of stuck, which is good because you don't want to roll them off the shelf. So anyway, these will just go under here. Okay. There you go. What did I forget? Put about, put about a twenty dollar bill in there, all right, and give it to me, all right? Yeah. Now, well, your name's not spelled right, so you'll never get it. Oh, that's true. As you, uh, you can see that you can make this bank anything. I mean, you can make a, you can find a toy boat. Basically, you have a. Uh, basically, you have a box on wheels. Uh, I also looked for armor car plans. I thought that'd make a nice bank. Uh, again, they were all too small for the opening. When you look at plans, they give you the plans, but they don't give you any real dimensions because they want you to buy them, right? So you think it's going to be big enough and then find out it's not. You can go to Bob's. Bob could probably take that and sketch up and change it any size you want. Well, we, we could have done that. And when you look at the plans like he's talking about, it, the plans that give you description is big enough. It's the, the back is a certain size, but it's not big enough to insert that in the back. You know, the whole side was... We'd big. have to take the... We'd have to scale it up, take the plans and add 20% to everything. We could have done that, but we by that time, the, the car would have gotten a little big, I thought. <laughs> you ready? We did the same with the JPEG file, so if you want that to get to the top of it, you can do that. And you can enlarge the JPEG to whatever size you want. Just do the same amount each sheet. By the way, you can buy those, uh, those are old post office box doors. Back when the post office had the little individual slots. Uh, they don't make those anymore. I think they're yesterday's technology, but uh, you can still buy them on eBay and stuff like that. But they're getting pricey. A lot of post offices still use them. Really? A lot of I'm sorry. I, I haven't seen them in a long time. Not a little town. Maybe a little town. Yeah, I'm right. in the road. I live in a little town. Who else got them? Who else got them? Well, he's cleaned up. The next box we're going to build. Wait a minute. One more thing. I'm sorry. The good thing about these is. If you're going to put it in the lamp, if you're going to put it in the lamp, you're going to put it in the lamp. 
you want to get with Rob, he can show you how. You can change the combination of these. Because it's all about this little wheel right here. Lining up. You can, you can adjust the combination. So that just way, remember what you just These are letters. You don't have all the letters of the alphabet. You've got quite a few. So you can make it for dummies like me to do my initials or something. That's how you open it. It's kind of a hard process. I mean, changing it's not that hard, but to get the line up to the right letters. Because you don't just have A, B, C. It's A, then A, B, and then B. B. Yeah. So you have half letters between each one. <laughs> that little star. So the combination could be between two letters. But so my wife knows her combination is dig, D-I-G. Where does she keep that in the house again? <laughs> she doesn't put money in it. It has a certificate inside that one saying it's an official post office box. So it's a, it's a decoration. Now, Rob's kids all have this, and Emily brought hers over. And before I could get to it, she took, took it back. But it had $85 in it. <laughs> so, she has no idea how much money was in it because she couldn't get into it for years. We made seven of those as a Christmas present for the grandkids. So this box was actually made by Rob and Bob several years ago, and we decided to duplicate duplicate it and show you how that box is made. And in the process of making this box, the big item on that box, of course, is to make sure that we have a a dimension that meets our criteria of three and a sixteenth by four or greater. So that's what the base plate is. And then it's a it's 10 by 7, which is almost your golden triangle or golden triangle. And top. It's 10, um, no, it's I'm sorry, it's 6 by 7. So I jumped into this to make box joints. Now we've had discussion on box joint jigs and how to do box joints. And for the you that don't know, like well, maybe nobody. Here is an example of a box joint. Now, you can, you can go out commercially and buy a setup for making a box joint, or you can get industrious and make your own. And where's my box? Okay. Um, So here is a box joint jig made by one of our engineers who sometimes overthink things like me. It may not fit in that saw. Though. It doesn't. It doesn't, but that's all. Right. Every saw in the world is different slots, but basically it's a, a place to put the the wood against this frame here. It's got a reference piece of metal here. Can you see any of this, Jack? Yeah. A reference piece of metal and when making a box joint the width of the box and the um, height are important so you you set the height of the blade by putting this on your uh, jig bring the blade up to us the same height as the wood and then you adjust the, the space in between the jig be, between the cuts and Bob's put a caliper micro a dial, thank you. A dial indicator for doing that, and uh, that works well when you have the right tool. Now, if you're um, got things laying around the shop in the way of a box joint set, but um, in this case, this is a dado set. And that dado set will make a quarter inch cut, but the problem with it seriously is the the blades are too far, too few, too far apart, and this piece here has to be really nice, or you get tear out on the back, and then the box joints don't go together. So I uh, played with that one and made some joints, and they were a little. They were a little loose. You can see in this, you can see in this joint, 
the gap between the the fingers is, is not right. Also the height's not right, so I practiced and the wind was coming around pretty much was with this one. But what, uh, Bob had a nice box joint cutting set that he had loaned to a friend. So for two days, the friend says, I gave it back. And Bob says, I've torn my house up. I don't have it. And the friend says, no, I gave it back. So yesterday we were looking for an extension cord in his closet. He tripped over something and said, what, what, what was that? And looked down and it's a box joint set. We should use that first. So I, since I found it yesterday, I went home, put this on the saw, and when you put the blades on this way, you get a um, 5 8 inch cut. And if you put them face to face, it's a quarter inch cut. Did I say 5 8 I have dyslexia. It says 5 8 5 8 5 8 5 8 right? Um, it's 3 8 It's a 3 8 <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, it, so we did. I used it as a three eighths tool. Mount on the saw. This would work nice. It was already set up for the quarter. I decided to go with three eighths because three eighths is a lot quicker when you're cutting uh, box joints. So here's one that I cut with quarter inch cuts. And you can see, they came out. They came out pretty tight. I'm gonna pass it around. Yeah, but the camera This is nice and tight. This was a test. And if you look on the front of this, you'll see a pattern. That's because I'm cutting lots of these, and that pattern was set up. So we meet our criteria, and this door will go in there. And I'm making several boxes, so a pattern made it much easier than having to try and scroll saw all those exactly alike. So pass that around, and that's pretty tight. That's so tight, in fact, that um, glue won't go in it. Since this box is six and a half, the finger joints on this one came out perfect. I didn't have to run it through the table saw and cheat and cut off the little fingers, though. So this one came out fine. Now, since Bob had done so much work here, and set this up for a quarter inch and I decided to go with a larger one. I had this tool that I saw the demo on four years ago, bought it, and now after four, a week figured out how it works. And I'm sure you've seen these before, it's basically just an iBox jig. And it worked very easily, just put your, adjust the size, put it in, run it through the table saw. The downside of this is it is spitting dust out in your face like you would not bleed off the back of this. So I had to come up with an attachment on the saw to um, catch the dust. I have a picture, I'll have that picture of that up on the web. But cut those joints on this, made this box, the dimensions would be there. And since this box has a, um, the plan is on this end, the short end, we'll put the little door. And then on the wide end, We'll put the big door. One or the other. One or the other. Um, I'll pass this around so you can see it. We um, took the top, <coughs> put a rabbit around the outside, um, a Bugs Bunny. And you can look at that. The joints on that one are, are great. The blade was a little tall, which means the fingers stick out a little bit. But I've got a friend that has a four by 80 inch 
Is it 80 inches? No, 40 inches, isn't it? 80 inches. Four, uh, belt sander. That will fix that in no time. So. If you go down in your shop, you I've got one. Have a I've got one too. Yeah. Well, that's my friend. I know him. I never, he's, he's never at home though. Okay, so we did that. Uh, we'll cut a slot in the top on the, on the, on the, uh, these are called pregnant pauses because I'm thinking. Yeah. No, they're, they're thinking pauses. Edit that out. <laughs> so cut on the router. And between the two, I also, someone a couple weeks ago on the jigs and fixtures showed a uh, homemade um, tool he made. That was you, which would have worked just fine. Once you set the tool up and got it right, don't, don't adjust anything. You're there forever. But get to that first step. It's either too tight, too loose, or whatever. So I'll pass this around, and you can see, in some cases, the adjustments are still being made. Now... We also said that you could do just about anything making these. So we had a class some time ago. I don't know if anybody remembers this class. I think they were called Green and Green Boxes. And um, it's been sitting in Rob's shop. And I think the decision was we're never going to finish that thing. So we took the Green and Green Box, modified it a little. We'll clean it up and we'll take this and make it a post office box. We'll put this right there with a slot on the top. So I'll, I'll pass that around. But yeah, that's just an example of um, any box we can use. So that's pretty much it. Any questions? That's green and green. It had a really nice top on it. We whacked it down at three quarters of an inch around. It would look gorgeous if we actually finished it, but after we did a bunch of them, we won another two of them. <laughs> I was just happy to get another shot. Yes, sir. So you can make, obviously you can make uh, finger joints, box joints, whatever, in different uh, widths. Do you make a separate uh, fixture for each one? Uh, for each width? On this fixture, um, do, you have a, do you have a separate uh, gauge here? This is set up for quarter inch, right, Bob? This is set up for quarter inch? I believe so. Uh, on the demo on this one, this adjusts any width you want automatically. On your fixture, you on mine the backing plate, which is serving uh, here against the fence. Yeah, I have spacers glued on. Oh, you want the other one? So I grab that. So, if so you, you can make all the Your there's a spacer that with the glues it Yeah, you, you on change the spacer that that changes from here to here. So you actually swap up your back plate yeah. itself. No, so right. Right. Well, yeah. in all cases, you need to make sure that the um, the board is flat against the bottom, otherwise if it shifts this way or that, it's going to um, give you bad fingers. Okay. We're not seeing that piece. There's a piece there that that metal this metal plate right here catches the fingers and adjusts for the finger joint. Yeah, so on this one, and I'm not selling this one, but it, it's nice. There's your finger. Now, one other item in doing box joints, you need a reference point to make sure that you're always doing same side to same side. You'll see a line here. I put it in here, cut the first cut, work through it. Then I turn it over and put it up against there with the same line on this. That separates your, your finger joints. And then you simply 
cut that one, next one, next one, next one. So when you finish, they line up. I say they line up. Yeah. Yeah. So that they line up. Of course. And if you look at the, the box, that, what, uh, all the grain matches around the box. Well, all the wood we're using here, all the wood we're using here is half inch. You, okay. You need to make sure all your wood's plain to the same thickness. Make sure all your wood's the same width. They have to have matching pieces. So actually this was cut out of one long board and, and done that way because vari variations in thickness messed up your, your joints. Variations in height.